Okay, in this video, we're going to advance our study of projectiles from the horizontal plane to an inclined plane. So thus far, what we've been looking at is an XY plane like so, where the x-axis is the horizontal earth. Now remember, the earth, of course, is curved over, if you look at it, over thousands of miles. However, if you look at it over, it will say, a short period of like 100 meters, it looks pretty much flat. So we can model, we'll say, the earth as being flat locally. And we'll say the x-axis is the locally flat earth. And we've been doing, of course, projectiles where we say this is the initial velocity vector and it drops down here. The only angle we need to know is theta, like so. And with the angle theta, we're able to model everything about this projectile. However, we want to make this more realistic. And it's more realistic, to, of course, to say that the Earth is not flat locally, but it's, it's at inclines. So we'll say this is an incline here. And you might say, well, this, this could be like your car driving up the side of a hill. Now, of course, once again, this is only modeling it because the hills are always, you know, usually curved or have bumps in them. So this is just a model. And we're going to say that the incline is at angle theta to the horizontal x axis, like so. Now, what happens if we use our velocity vector here? If we have a velocity vector like so, there's our velocity vector, and it, there's my projectile. Now, remember from question, let me just see now what it is, question number 21 on page 73 of the book, Fundamental Applied Mathematics, we spoke about the unit circle, and we said the following. We said that if you have, uh, there's your, your axis like so, and this is zero degrees. You, every line is to be taken from the zero degrees. So this line here is taken from the zero degrees like that. This line here is taken the whole way around from zero degrees. And in that way, every line can be represented uh, unambiguously or without any, without, without any uncertainty by one angle. All right? So we're going to apply the same thing up here in that this angle there I have in red is at an angle gamma, we'll say, from the, from the, the horizontal x-axis. However, in order to analyze the motion, we need to find the actual angle of projection, which I'm going to call alpha, like so. So what can we see there? We can see that alpha is equal to gamma minus theta. All right, and that's very important. So we need to resolve the, the velocity vector u. So what we remember from, we'll say, the chapter exercise 3a is that u is equal to u sub x i hat plus u sub y j hat, like that. So if we resolve this, of course, we should be well able to resolve at this stage. We're going to get that it's u times cos of alpha i hat plus u times the sine of alpha j hat. Now, that is, of course, because we're taking that it's along this plane here rather than along the x-axis, all right? But we know, of course, that alpha is equal to gamma minus theta. Like so. All right, and that's we'll say our new velocity vector. So that that expression there takes into account fully the fact that we're on an inclined plane, and we're able to apply the same reasoning for everything, distances and everything else. Okay. So the next thing we need to discuss is gravity, and this gets slightly more complicated. And I'm going to try my best to. Uh, to, to show you this or explain this to you here. So say this is our original xy plane where the x is the horizontal, localized horizontal vertical or earth and y is of course going straight up to the sky. And we have our incline as usual. I'm going to call this at an angle theta. Now where does gravity act? Gravity acts vertically I'm going to draw it over here just for just for ease. It, it, it acts vertically in the negative y direction or the negative i hat direction. So if I apply it to this plane, it's acting at an angle to this plane here. So you can, I can no longer read, if I, if, if I of course uh, analyze the motion with just the usual xy plane, well then this gravity is grand and it's just in the, the, the negative j hat direction. However, it's often easier to analyze the motion 
in the plane that you're uh, in the actual inclined plane. So what usually people do is as follows: they will make a new xy plane, or they will rotate the xy plane. And what they'll do is say the incline now becomes the new x-axis. I'm just going to draw this in another color. So we're going to say it's in red. That's the new x-axis. And then we, of course, have a y-axis perpendicular to it. And I'm going to have xy, x, x prime, y prime. And the only difference here is that I've picked up the xy plane and rotated it at an angle theta degrees. So this means, of course, that when I have my projectile, if I look at my projectile here, the motion here turns into into what we did in chapter one. Well, if you ignore everything else, if you ignore, for example, this this axis and this axis, you're left with just a normal, uh, a normal, uh, you know, uh, a normal projectile on a not not an inclined plane, and that's quite simple to analyze. So and yeah, that that's that's grand. But dealing with gravity in this case, so if you do that, gravity no longer acts just in the negative j hat direction. It actually acts in the x prime y prime plane. Not that didn't really rub out there, did it not? No, it did not. Get rid of you. So gravity, I'm going to draw in green, will act this direction. Like so. And look, it acts in the x prime y prime plane. So we need to be able to resolve this vector into its component unit vectors as normal. Of course we can analyze the motion normally using this x, y axis and then we wouldn't need to resolve it. But like I said, it's easier to analyze in, uh, projectiles on inclined planes by rotating your plane. So what you do, you get the, the, result, the component unit vectors and they are the two vectors which when added together will give you your resultant vector of gravity. So it's uh, u sub y, that would be um, j prime hat, as in this, we'll say j prime and y, I, I hat prime are this direction, and this one here would be u sub uh, x i hat prime. So like what I'm saying here is that the, this, this unit vector here is i hat prime, and this unit vector here is j hat prime. All right, whereas down here we had this is i hat, and this is j hat. We're just taking into account that we've rotated the axes, like so. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so like that, that's that's how we do it. Now the only thing we need to we need to take care of is the fact that we have a new angle, and this angle here is theta. And this angle theta is obviously at an angle to my x prime, y prime plane. So I'll draw the, the x y prime x the new plane here again. All right. So we need to just show you one more thing before we can analyze this. If I have two angles, one like this, I'm going to call it theta, and another in green, I'm going to call it alpha. Now, where the two, we'll say, um, I don't know what you call that shape, uh, kind of, we'll say, where the two angles intersect each other at a right angle, like so. If they intersect each other at a right angle, then they will be equal. So in this case, theta equals alpha. Like that. So if we look at if we look at gravity, if we look at gravity, gravity is bisecting. If we drop this the whole way down to here, and down to here, gravity is bisecting the uh, the uh, the inclined plane at a right angle. So look, that means this angle theta is also with this angle up top here. So if I call this, if I just, just with a crack, I'd call this alpha, I'm now able to say that theta equals alpha because they're bisecting at a right angle. So basically what I'm trying to say to you is the if you rotate your axes, the angle for your re resolving of gravity would be equal to the angle of projection for that reason because they bisect each other perpendicularly. And that's just a small bit of geometry. Nothing too mad. So let's just once finally again do that whole thing. If this is my inclined plane, and this is my usual x axis, so I have my x axis and my y axis making my x y plane, 
and I now want to make my new XY plane so I rotate the XY plane so that the X axis now becomes the horizontal or the, the actual incline itself. I'm going to call this X prime. Make a Y axis perpendicular to it called Y prime. Like that. Then your projectile here in red, okay, will be projected at an angle alpha. And this angle here is gamma, therefore alpha is equal to gamma minus theta. All right, and also if you look at gravity, uh, draw this in black, gravity acts this direction like so. So if you resolve it into its component unit vectors like this, and you, if you extend it down, you'll find that it bisects the plane here at an angle perpendicular, so therefore this angle here is also theta, like that. And therefore gravity will be equal to u cos theta, or g cos theta, and uh, g sine theta. Is there anything else? Yeah, g cos theta and g sine theta. Now, if you're, you're remembering the sine, of course, that g is equal to, like g, I will say always that g is equal to minus 9.81. The book will tell you that minus g is equal to 9.81. So for that reason, if you look at page 76 of the book, Fundamental Applied Mathematics, it'll have the resolved vector vectors as minus g cos theta and minus g sine theta. Okay, so they're the same thing. Uh, I just looked at them differently. Now finally, if we just look at our gravity vector, so we have a gravity vector like this, and we're going to resolve it like so. Like so. Now if this is theta, if we're to resolve this correctly, we will notice, of course, that this here, and this is the vector g, this will be g sine theta, and this is g cos theta. And what that means, of course, is that this time, the sine acts in the horizontal direction, whereas the cosine acts in the, uh, in the vertical direction. And I think that's pretty much it now. I, everything else we can do ourselves during the, during the questions. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.